yeah, it's a mess. This book should not have been written. It, that's, I think, what makes her so scary, is she's a realistic type of scary visceral in the best way. Good morning. Hello. I'm feeling like official booktuber that I'm doing one of these videos because I've watched so many of these basically books I've read this month and although I'm not quite a booktuber yet because obviously <laughs> so here I am. Books I read in January. Okay I'm gonna go kind of in order. Actually I am gonna go in order. <sighs> I don't know what I'm talking about. So the first book I finished in 2020 was actually The Secret Life of Addie LaRue. Now I did just feature this in a video where I talked about books I didn't love as much as other people loved and I had a little bit of higher expectations for this. I think this just genuinely wasn't something that was in my preferential wheelhouse. I thought the plot was fairly interesting but I didn't find the characters that remarkable. In fact, I didn't love them and I'm a character driven type of reader. So if I'm not like hopefully rooting for the main character, then I kind of fall off a little bit and that's how I felt with this book. I'm gonna go ahead and link the video down below where I talked about this book, including some other like very popular books you see all over booktube and kind of like I guess my controversial opinions on them so if you guys want more about this book I'll go ahead and link that down below but I gave this a three out of five stars on my goodreads I it wasn't as good as I thought it was gonna be for how much I saw this book the next book I read was this guy here which is called hunting Charles Manson this is by Liz wheel and I gave this a three out of five stars on my goodreads I actually like this a bit I thought it was very interesting because I know a basic amount about Charles Manson and like the murders and basically the cult that was following him but I didn't know all the, like the finer details so I like this because it gave you all the details without getting too complicated I felt like the author laid it out pretty well in fact some of the negative opinions I saw about this book was it was a little too simplistic for people who are really into like knowing about Charles Manson and all the Manson murders but for me like I said I didn't know a ton about it so a lot of their stuff that I read about it was new and I thought this was a really good way to kind of introduce me to the topic. I like this. The next book I finished was actually a book that took me a little bit longer to finish. This is Spook by Mary Roach. I gave it a three out of five stars and the reason that I say it took me a little bit longer to finish is because Mary Roach books for me are not marathon reading books. I tend to set down her books, then pick them back up. I'll read a chapter or two. I'll set them down, pick them back up, read a chapter or two. And that's kind of how I digest her books. She writes about a lot of different topics. Like I read one about space. I read one about this, which is the afterlife. I read one about like cadavers. So she'll pick a topic and she'll kind of deep dive into them and kind of tell you the little known facts about the topic that she's discussing. So this was really cool. It basically talked a lot about like the afterlife through different religions or it talked about like ectoplasm, the concept or scientific backing behind that or like what is technically paranormal or ghost phenomena and what could be causing it. Mary Roach for me is entertaining. I don't like love love her books but like I said for something that I want to just have while I'm reading other books that I'm marathon reading. If I'm having a moment where I'm like, I feel like reading like 15 or 20 minutes, her books are kind of perfect for me in that aspect. So the next book that I read was actually a digital copy. I read Magicians of the Gods, The Forgotten Wisdom of Earth's Lost Civilizations. It's by Graham Hancock and I've actually read another book by him called Fingerprints of the Gods. This is like the more up-to-date version of that book and essentially talks about like ancient civilizations and how we're possibly wrong in different archaeological perspectives and that there might be a lot of ancient civilizations that existed that we're not even aware of that science doesn't want to necessarily accept their existence. It's kind of an informational dense <laughs> book. So do I remember a lot from it? Yes and no. It's very interesting and that's why I like Graham Hancock as an author. I read a couple of his other books like I said, but they're like, they're kind of heavy to read. This one also took me a second to finish. And I give this a four out of five stars because again, I think the topics he brings up are fascinating and it basically debunks a lot of things that we think are true about ancient civilizations and then he brings up facts as to why they're probably not. The next book I finished was Circe. This one I gave it a four out of five stars. I really really like this book. Madeline Miller is one of my favorite authors. I picked this book up after reading The Song of Achilles because that's one of my all-time favorite books and she just writes so beautifully. Now Circe's is one of those books that's really, it's really like female 
empowerment hero based so if you're looking for a good book like that this is definitely up your alley and what I really liked about Cersei as a character or how Madeline Miller painted her she wasn't someone that was like she's a beautiful goddess who comes with all of these wonderful powers and of course she has advantages over others it was like Cersei basically started as an underdog she's not even truly a like god or even really a demigod she's kind of like a nymph who has magical powers and even then she has to like work really hard to hone her magical powers and it's even said like she's pretty like average looking she even has like a really obtrusive voice so I like that it wasn't like your typical hero character and I really really like any books that are retelling of the Odyssey I love reading a different perspective from Cersei and right now I'm actually reading the Penelope Ad, which is Penelope's retelling of the Odyssey from her perspective. So Penelope is Odysseus's wife. Cersei is like a witchy character <laughs> that's in the Odyssey that Odysseus encounters. So this is her perspective. The next book I read was Behind Closed Doors by B.A. Paris. Now B.A. Paris, I believe, writes a lot of other thriller books. I gave this a three out of five stars. I actually read this in one sitting, so I was obviously entertained enough to finish it, but essentially what this book is about is this woman named Grace who falls in love and marries this man named Jack who is basically a picturesque man. He's very handsome and dashing and wealthy and providing for her. And he's got some, you know, baggage. And Grace's sister who has Down syndrome, who she absolutely adores, somehow gets wrapped up in their whole, you know, relationship. I won't give too much because, you know, you gotta read the book if you wanna find out. But like I said, I sat down, read this in one sitting, and I was thoroughly entertained by it. Was it the best thriller I've ever read? No, I wasn't like, whoa, blew my socks off. Couldn't see that coming. I was more like, oh, okay, yeah, that makes sense, that sucks. <laughs> After You by Jojo Moyes. I gave this a two out of five stars, and to be honest, I was being very generous with that two out of five stars. So this is the follow-up book to the me Before You, which is one of my all-time favorite books. Again, I talked about it in a video where I discussed my all-time favorite books, which I'll link down below. And so I was actually really looking forward to the rest of the trilogy because there's this one after you, and then there's still me. And basically you follow Lou after, well, I, I don't wanna ruin, <laughs> I don't wanna ruin the first book in case you didn't read it. So let me think of a way to like explain this without ruining the plot of the first book in case you didn't read it. Yeah, it's a mess. This book should not have been written. It obviously discusses characters in the first book and then it kind of changes your perception. Basically a character comes out of nowhere in this book that you're just like, really, come on. And like, spoiler alert, but not really, it's a bratty teen who is entitled in my opinion and I'm the type of person, whenever they bring in an obnoxious like adolescent or teenager, I'm just like over it. Like I don't wanna hear about the complaints, I don't wanna hear about the behavioral issues, I don't want to hear about like the drinking or the smoking or whatever. And like you're such a champion for Lou reading that she has to deal with someone like that for me it was just obnoxious. Awful. Unnecessary. So disappointed. The next book I read was a digital book which was The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman. I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. In this book you follow young Bod who is an ordinary child who is raised in a graveyard by like ghosts and apparitions and he has like a caretaker that's mainly in charge of him as well as like ghost parents so he has all of these parental guardians and of course he tangles with being raised by these ghosts but also he's a real boy so he kind of grapples with the complexity of both worlds and he meets a young girl that he's also very fond of as well as he has to kind of figure out why bad people are after him and essentially like killed his parents. So essentially he's trying to figure that out. His ghost family is like trying to protect him, but essentially he's kind of got to protect himself. Anyways, without giving too much away, I really like this story. I love Neil Gaiman. I think he's a very fun author. This was a very cute read. It was really cute. I really liked it. Following that, I finished this book. This is called The Deals That Made the World by Jacques Peretti. I enjoyed this book. I gave it a three out of five stars, I believe. Yes, three out of five stars. This again, it was kind of similar to Mary Roach. I could read a chapter, put it down, read another chapter, put it down. It wasn't something I necessarily marathon read. And essentially the premise of this book is discussing some of the 
deals that were obviously made that manipulated big systems that exist in our country. For example, health insurance or the light bulb or phones that go obsolete quickly. So a lot of these things that impact us day to day, why do they impact us so much? Why are they more expensive? How people are profiting on them? And basically like the big industries behind it. It's pretty eye-opening. I don't know if I read anything in here that was like super shocking to me. This was just confirming all of my suspicions. So yeah, it was fun. I like this one too. So the rest of the books that I have are Stephen King books. And let me just say this, I got into Stephen King last year after I'd read 112263. That was my first intro into Stephen King and I started reading a lot of his other books. So this year I picked up a couple more and I've been like buying a lot of Stephen King books as well. So keep it out for some Stephen King themed videos and hauls. In fact, I posted a video talking about some of the books I'm gonna talk about in a second. But the first book I read this year from Stephen King is Misery. So this is an absolute classic. I gave this a four and a half out of five stars. This was such a mind bending book. And first of all, I don't watch a lot of TVs or movies. I just don't have the patience for it. It's just really not something I'm passionate about. I'm way too much of like a busybody to sit down and watch something. Don't ask me how I can sit down and read. It's just a different thing in my head. But anyway, so I had never seen the movie Misery and I never read the book. I knew kind of the basic plot line that it's basically this author who is trapped by his biggest fan, Annie Wilkes, and she essentially like saves him from a car crash. She takes him home to recuperate from his accident and so she can kind of bring him back to life in a sense and being his biggest fan, she loves the books he's written. Except the last one, could not put it down. I had to know what was coming next. I'm not gonna lie, it is a little graphic in some places, but it's a very appropriate graphic, if that makes sense. Like, it's not excessive. It just really adds to the psychosis of Annie Wilkes, and it, that's, I think, what makes her so scary, is she's a realistic type of scary. Like, you know that there are people out in the world that exist, that think like her. This, I can definitely see why this is a Stephen King classic. I've got this under my belt. Now I can go watch the movie, which I know differs in some ways, but now I'll be able to figure out how. The next three books I'm gonna be discussing are featured in a vlog I just uploaded to my channel in which I had a Stephen King marathon weekend. I finished all three of these books in one weekend. And yeah, so the first one that I finished was Salem's Lot. This is another classic of Stephen King's and it's a, a vampire type of book and Salem Slot has that like old town vibe. I also gave this a four and a half stars and I'm not gonna lie, when I first started reading this, I was a little concerned because there are a ton of characters in this book. A lot of really like small characters as well as like secondary characters and main characters. And I, like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, I am a character driven reader. But because of that, I like to invest my effort and my energy into a few characters, not like 20, which it's a little bit like that in this book. But I have to say, this was the best example of it done right because I feel like Stephen King doing that was purposeful and essentially he's trying to convey the idea that Salem's Lot or Jerusalem's Lot is a small town where all of these timelines and people impact and affect each other's lives. And so it was actually a really interesting read because you're reading like one person going through a certain thing and then you read the other person's perspective and then you read how it affects someone else, but it's done so well that you don't even notice like all of these transitions happening. I thought the ending of this was excellent. This was like, yes, it ended so good. So I really like this one. It has a perfect spooky time book. The next book that I'm gonna talk about is a book that became another one of my favorite books of all time, and that is The Green Mile. I gave this a five out of five stars. Oh, gosh. First of all, this book was originally written in a serial type format, so Stephen King would release a portion of the book. I don't know how often, I don't know if it's like once a week or once a month, but it was basically released periodically to keep the reader wanting more. It was a six part series originally. There were several times in this book that I was literally like bawling, like tears coming down from my eyes. Again, it's just the way that Stephen King writes. It evokes a lot of emotional response from you. Like it, they can be a little bit draining in that sense because you get emotionally invested with the characters. And a lot of his writing is just very visceral in the best way. The characters in this, John Coffey, wonderful. I love Mr. Jingles. It's even crazy because you start to 
like some of the bad characters in this, or like the characters that are supposed to be bad, like Delacroix. Fantastic. And I, again, hadn't watched the movie, so I didn't know what was going to happen. And so now that I read the book, I'm going to watch the movie. I've actually heard that the movie is not only amazing, but a lot of people, this is the first time I've heard this really, like the movie more than the book. So if that's the case, it might become one of my favorite movies because this is definitely one of my favorite books. The last book I finished in January was Carrie. Now I gave this a three out of five stars. This is actually Stephen King's first published novel. And it was a book that I read in one sitting. I think I read it in a football game. So it was a pretty quick read. I didn't care for the character of Carrie. She's a bullied teen who, I mean, she's just ruthlessly bullied. Like reading about her experiences in this book, it's just kind of like, ooh, it makes you cringe because it's just awful to even read. But on top of that, poor Carrie is also being like mentally abused by her mother who is overly religious. She is a te telepathic, teenager as well and so you know she gets her revenge i don't know there were some people that i felt like were like innocent bystanders so for me i wasn't like yeah go carrie you teach them yeah this was pretty good not my favorite glad i read it so anyways guys those were the books that i finished in january 2021 